Have you been drinking the same coffee for so long that you can't even taste it anymore? Are you tired of spending $15 on a bag of coffee that you don't even like? Then this coffee show is for you. Welcome to the Bracketology of Coffee, Season 2, Round 4. The theme of this season is inexpensive coffee. Every bag was purchased at Walmart, and the average price per bag is only $5.05. So let me introduce the competitors of Round 4. First off, we have Seattle's Best Portside Blend. They recently rebranded their coffees, and this was previously called Signature Blend Number 3. Uh, the origin is Latin America. 12 ounces goes for $5.38. It's a medium roast, and they ranked number three in my brackets. Going up against Folgers, 100% Colombian. The origin is obviously Colombia. This 10.3 ounce can goes for $3.72. It's a medium roast, and they ranked number six in my brackets. I love to include coffees like this because I did a blind coffee tasting with my parents a few years ago and one of the Folgers blends actually won in a blind taste test. So it'll be very interesting to see how this one does. Just because it's been around a long time and it's cheap doesn't mean it's not good. So um, I like to give them a fair shot. We'll see how they do. Um, let me give you the uh, how this works. I prepare my coffees in a French press. The recipe I use is one tablespoon of coffee grounds for every five ounces of water. I steep it for four minutes. The competition consists of two halves. The first half, I drink them both black, fresh out of the French press. And in the second half, I add some cream. Each round, they'll be scored out of 100. So the maximum points any coffee would score would be 200 points. Let me get these coffees steeping and I'll be right back. Thanks for watching. to taste some coffee. Uh, two quick footnotes before we begin. I want to make it clear that I'm not a super taster. 25% um, of the population is thought to be a super taster and I consider myself an average taster. This is just a fun comp uh, coffee competition allowing us to kind of discover new coffees and um, see what else, uh, see what other people are drinking out there, what's delicious, what's um, reasonable, um, just kind of expanding our palate a bit. What I look for in coffee is drinkability, and I define that as something that is smooth and flavorful with a pleasing aftertaste. So I'm pretty excited for this matchup. I think it's going to be a good one. I'm going to put some coffee tips on the screen for you. And let's get started. So the way I do it is I drink it twice. The first taste, I'm just getting an overview, and I'll score it on the second taste. So let's get this first half going. This is the Seattle's Best Port Side Blend. It's not bad. Um, some of you know that Starbucks has uh, purchased Seattle's Best, and I tend to think that Starbucks kind of over roasts their beans sometimes. What they claim to be a medium roast, in my mind, is more like a medium dark roast. And I feel the same way about this coffee. It seems a little bit darker than a medium roast to me. Um, and I do prefer a light roast, but we'll see how it plays out. So let's uh, go ahead and get an overview on this Folgers, the 100% Colombian. They also claim to be a medium roast, and that definitely does taste like a medium roast to me. Um, I love Colombian coffee, and I'm not getting a super strong Colombian flavor. Um, nevertheless, it is pretty drinkable. So uh, let's go ahead and score the Seattle's best. 
this is gonna be a tough one for me I know this is my buddy Simon down in Atlanta this is what he's drinking right now so uh, <laughs> I don't want to let him down but I also want to be fair so we'll see You know, I've got to be honest, it's um, the first taste, it, it seems pretty drinkable, and then it's got a, a little bit of a, an aftertaste that I don't necessarily care for. Um, some people might love that aftertaste, I just don't particularly care for it. Regardless, um, I feel like it's a good coffee. Um, I'm going to give them an 82. And now for the Folgers. Yeah, so typically these big companies that produce just masses amounts of coffee, typically their coffees will have a specific flavor, and, and I don't know how to describe it other than the fact that it's like a like an office coffee type of flavor. Not horrible, uh, but also not great. Um, man, this is a tough one. I think uh, I think I'll give them an eighty-one. And if you've seen my competitions before, it's not so much about the score as it is the score in comparison to who they're going up against. So in this tasting, it's really hard for me to, to throw a score out there. But I do know that I like the Seattle's Best a tiny bit better. Uh, that being said, in the second half when I add some cream, that cream typically changes the flavors altogether. And so that funky aftertaste in Seattle's Best might shine through with the cream. Same thing with the Folgers. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, I'm going to pause this video. Add a little bit of cream and we'll be right back for the second half. Alright, we're back for the second half of this competition. For those of you who follow my videos, you know that I'm getting ready to do camping full time. And I leave on Sunday. Um, today is Monday. I'm going to do one more video on Wednesday. And then after that, uh, my videos will all be on the road. So I'll probably be sitting at a picnic table at my campsite doing these coffee videos and also the outdoor show videos. So that's going to be a lot of fun for me. One thing I have changed up with these tastings that I kind of do behind the scenes. Um, so the way I make my coffee is I put it in the microwave. I let it come just as soon as it starts boiling, I pull it out. Because once it starts boiling, it's at about 212. You kind of want your coffee uh, maybe 160 to 190 something along those lines so what I've been doing is after I let it steep for four minutes I also let the coffee cool down for about three minutes and I've noticed that I've been able to distinguish the flavors quite a bit so if you're drinking your coffee super hot um, and you think it doesn't have enough flavor try letting it cool down for a few minutes and see if that changes things for you but um, let's go ahead and get started I've added some cream this is the Seattle's best port side blend I'm going to drink it twice, first uh, for the overview, and the second time I'll give them a score. Yeah, so the cream has, as I mentioned, has changed up that flavor quite a bit. Um, I do like it better with the cream. Um, we'll see how that plays into the scoring, but uh, let's get an overview on this Folgers. Mmm, yeah, that's really good with cream as well. That flavor I was telling you about that typically comes with you know lower end coffees, um, the cream had totally masks it. So um, this is gonna be a tough one for me. Uh, let's give the Seattle's best a score. Yeah, I've just got to be honest, um, that aftertaste is something that I don't really care for. 
And um, if I was a super taster, I would tell you what that flavor is, <laughs> but I'm not, so I won't. Um, let me give them an 84 in the second half. Now for the Folgers, 100% Colombian. Um, that's really good, you know, and the criteria that I use is drinkability, smooth and flavorful with a pleasing aftertaste. And for a coffee that's less than $4, I mean, it's really amazing. Um, I didn't like it as much when it was black, but I truly love it, um, with cream. I'm going to give them an 87. Let me tell you these results and we will be back to declare a winner in this round four competition. All right, we're back to declare a winner. First off, we have Seattle's best. They scored an 82 in the first half, 84 in the second half, for a total of 166. My buddy Simon is not going to be happy with me, but, um, you know, I started doing this recommendation thing, whether or not I recommend this to a friend or family member. And uh, I kind of go based on whether or not I plan to buy this coffee again. And I can't get over that aftertaste. I don't know what it is. My buddy Simon does come from the other side of the pond, so I'm sure his palate is a lot different than mine. Um, but I actually would not recommend this coffee, uh, which I'm sad to say because I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of Seattle's best but um, if they roasted it a little bit lighter I think I would totally be digging that coffee but now we got the Folgers 100% Colombian 81 in the first half 87 in the second half for a total of 168 can you believe it we've got an underdog winner Folgers 100% Colombian is the winner of round four Moving forward, we have round five and round six, and then we have the finals. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. We will see you next time.